where we are making vivid, reflective digital signs for outdoor advertising. Uh, so I'll give you a, a little bit of an overview of the outdoor advertising market and why we're different, and then I'll show you a product demo. Okay, so there's two major stakeholders in outdoor advertising. There are the sign operators and the advertisers. And um, both of these stakeholders want digital, as opposed to static, uh, stretch vinyl signs. Um, sign operators like digital because it allows them to run six to eight ads per location. And that allows them to increase their ad revenue by up to 10x, which is a huge win for them. Um, advertisers also like digital because it creates capacity in the market. Uh, so no longer are they locked out of a particular location uh, because somebody has a contract for that, that billboard for a month or up to three, month, or three years. Um, plus, it allows them to show time-relevant content. Um, they can show the score of the game. They can show or advertise breakfast in the morning, dinner in the evening. Um, but here's the thing. Less than 2% of billboards in the U.S. are digital. And that's because the Predominant technology that's used in digital is LED, and LED has some big implementation problems. It's expensive to purchase, it's expensive to operate, and it's expensive to install. But perhaps uh, most importantly, uh, many communities don't want LED digital in their backyard. Um, so it's heavily restricted by law and out outright banned in many communities. Uh, often, uh, folks just don't want to look like Las Vegas or Times Square. So what Solchroma is doing is different. Um, here is a, a still image of uh, one of our, our displays. Uh, we're making a low power reflective display uh, that's thin and light and low cost using commodity materials. And uh, perhaps the most important thing about our technology is that it is reflective. So it doesn't emit any light. and Therefore, it is regulatory friendly. And that opens up a vast swath of the market that, uh, to us that LED can't go. Um, so let me pause right here, and I will show you all a video of our display in action. OK, so what you're looking at here is a 3 by 3 pixel prototype. And you can see it here over on this table over here live um, after uh, the presentations. Um, but the, the technology behind this is uh, something called an electroactive polymer. And we use electroactive polymers configured in a particular way as pumps to pump colored ink from behind the display to the front of the display. And as a result, we can get highly vivid, saturated colors. And this is something that other technologies in the reflective display industry just can't do. Um, because they're using uh, um, color filters and other technologies that um, lend the, their displays to be uh, very lowly saturated and not very vivid in color. Um, and uh, we've solved many of the big problems in this space, and um, as a result, we're, we're able to generate and produce a full color, um, highly saturated sign. Um, so I'll stop right there and uh, maybe take some questions from the audience. In, in the evening, we treat this just like any other stretch vinyl or, or printed billboard. Uh, so we'll use the existing infrastructure that is available, and they have lights um, on, the, on some gantry, um, either over or below the sign, and uh, it illuminates the sign. Yes? What's your current pixel density, and how does that compare with the expectations in the industry? Uh, so what you saw in this image, or this, uh, this video, is uh, these are 24 or 25 millimeter pixels. Um, what we've learned from talking with customers is that uh, the vast majority of the market will be satisfied with a 16 millimeter pixel, and that's what we're designed to. Could you talk a little bit more about um, the materials that go into the technology, about how you're able to create the digital ink and uh, have it reflect correctly? Sure. Uh, so. What sits here in, in that white pixel, that white pixel is just a, a color reflector, or just a reflector, it's just a, a, a white um, piece of material. Um, and uh, we use this uh, rubber membrane called an electroactive polymer that sits behind that white material, and there's three per pixel. And each one has 
uh, different pigments in it, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And uh, those pigments are pushed up on top of that white reflector, and they act as a little filter um, over the, the white reflector, and they essentially color the display in any color that you want. Um, so most of the materials are plastic, rubber, um, and um, some, some composite, uh, composites and adhesives. Um, very low cost, very low weight um, materials. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about life cycle and maintenance? For example, how is this going to deal with extreme high dry temperatures in Phoenix or winters in Toronto? That's a great question. And that is a very important requirement for this market. Um, the incumbent technology is expected to last between five to ten years, um, depending on the quality of the product. Uh, so we have to meet the same requirements. Um, we're, it's early stages for our company, so we, we're not entirely sure yet, but uh, what I will say about this is that we're aware of the requirements and we're designing this with materials that are proven to last in the outdoor environment. So the materials come from the paint industry, the pigments, and the, um, the inks that we use come from the paint industry and are proven to last outdoors. Um, the other materials, uh, plastics and adhesives, come from, come from the building and construction industry, and from the automotive industry, and from the aerospace industry. Technologies like OLED and LCD, which it would be difficult for us to compete against. Um, plus, our technology really lends itself to large area displays with large pixels, like you see here, uh, rather than miniaturization, uh, which would be necessary for the closer viewing distances for indoor environments. However, uh, we have uh, discussed uh, with some customers uh, other applications outside of advertising, and that is in the architectural industry perhaps uh, displays that uh, sit on the outside of buildings for a digital mural, similar to the WGBH building that sits over the last bike, or just uh, for building facades to create an interesting look and feel that's changeable on a daily, hourly, or minute-by-minute -minute basis. Yes? Uh, I own shopping centers, and we're looking at a major sign project, a sign, We'd be happy to talk with you. <laughs> That's right, 250K is generally the, the, the top of the range that we understand for a high quality um, billboard. Uh, we think we'll, we'll come in at roughly 50% of that, or 125K for a 14 by 48 billboard. Well, I have a question about the Canadian market. Uh, you mentioned that that you guys are going to be able to do that. That's not the fastest that we can get. This, this technology is, uh, well, here's what I'll say about that. We are capable of animation, but we're not designing for animation. In fact, for the market that we're going after, um, animation and video is prohibited. So we're looking for quick refresh, um, but not necessarily for animation. Uh, what we are capable of doing is faster than you did see in this video. And um, again, that's an early prototype, and we'll be making improvements to it, and um, the refresh rate will get much quicker. All right, thank you, Art.